Hello again, Gary Stearman. Welcome to another edition of Prophecy in the News. Today's guest, Russ Dizdar, author of this book, The Black Awakening. Well, Russ Dizdar, welcome to Prophecy in the News once again. Of course, you've been here before. It's good Absolutely. to have you back. Good to be here. Glad to be with you. We're going to talk about uh, specifically about your book, The Black Awakening. Uh, the subject matter in this book is very serious. It has to do with, uh, let's call it demonic activity for the moment, and I'm not sure that covers all the bases, but we'll get into that. But before we start, uh, tell our audience who you are. Who is Russ sure. Dizdar? Uh, how are you led of the Lord? Uh, what, what is your life all about? Well, after getting sa saved in 1975, we uh, got into m ministry, evangelism, and, and that was our biggest issue, just evangelism. Mm -hmm. So Rust is there's just some a child of the 60s, early 70s getting saved, life completely changed, you know, just wanting to reach everybody, for, you know, with the gospel. Uh, young 19-year-old, you know, knowing that I'm supposed to be a preacher. I didn't even know what that was. Mm -hmm. So we're out, you know, in Bible school, going to Moody Bible, going to Cumberland College, uh, evangelizing, involved with Youth for Christ, and just, just doing all that we could. But we began to notice late 70s, early 80s, all these students that were into Satanism, dark things, so we began to target that. And um, for me, that was just um, the burden of the gospel, getting to everybody. And uh, yet we saw that dark side rising, and, and we just felt that we needed to, um, as a, a believer in Christ and someone who was called into full-time ministry, uh, reach everybody we could. Well, I'm holding my personal copy of The Black Awakening, and I don't know whether you can see this or not, but it has a number of bookmarks extending from the bottom of the book, which is the way I do things. While I'm reading, I can just open to a particular spot. I must have 30 or 40 bookmarks in here, and, and the book is loaded with information, but you need to know what kind of information. And, and let's talk for a moment about what's happening today. As I think back over the last four or five decades, We've gone through the drug revolution. We've gone through the New Age movement. We've gone through various spiritual revolutions. We've, we've seen people uh, in various uh, power centers around the world gather, you know, and uh, the harmonic convergence comes to mind. Right. And we've seen all kinds of quote-unquote New Age fads and fancies come and go. Shirley MacLaine was a big, uh, big figure for a long time. Very pleasant, very attractive lady, but she was preaching call it, I would call it the anti-gospel. And this is still happening. In other words, the New Age movement is not dead and gone, right? Oh, it's not dead and gone. It's uh, the largest spiritual counterfeits movement in the history of Christianity. Uh, it's broadened to where now we can say 800, 900 million worldwide. New Agers, e eclectic spirituality that comes from the Hinduism, uh, old occultism, a mixture of everything, and uh, but it is broader now worldwide than than anywhere that we've seen, and and this is the surface. The surface is what we see in the New Age, but it's the underground that we've had to go after. As the surface New Age grew worldwide and became stronger and more embedded, mm -hmm. uh, it got into embedding itself into pol political, the educational side, psychology. Uh, then we you know begin to look under the carpet. The dark side, the blood and guts of the dark side began to develop the same way. It's harder to deal with, but that's primarily what we did for the last 25, 28 years. The dark side, uh, a, a phrase that I suppose most of us would, would be familiar with without actually knowing what it means. And if you want to know what it means, The Black Awakening is the book you should read. Uh, with a certain caution, this book is a real book. It's, it does not, you know, put a, sh a smiley face, if you will, on this very dark reality. And I think what Russ is trying to, to get across is that there is something out there that's very real, very present, and yet we hardly ever see it or we don't know how to recognize it. Let's start with a group of people that you call the chosen ones. And when I read the book, I was rather amazed at this, and I kept saying to myself, wait a minute, who are these chosen ones you're talking about? Right, because that goes right to it. I mean, this goes back to the 1950s after the Nazis. This really springs from them and what they, in an under, underground way, called the Black Flame. 
So their goal, a master race, if you remember, the Aryans, the whole goal of making God-men, altered humans, uh, they wanted to make a super race. So when we began to deal with demonized people, but were more than just demonized, the terms now multiple personality disorder, dissociative identity disorder, so this, this, the secular words don't define what's really there. You have um, a human being chosen it before even birth. Uh, they're going to be demonized. They're going to be split. They're going to be programmed. They're going to be trained. So they're going to be designed or called by their, well, splitters, programmers, handlers, uh, the covens. They're going to be called, they call them chosen ones in the satanic sense. We're chosen in Christ. You're saying that people are being recruited. Oh, raised that way. It's, it's the same project. Here, and this is why the history of it's important. Go back to, and anybody can go look to Lavensborn among the Nazis. Real project. 900,000 babies, maybe. Uh, taking Aryans that prove their spiritual connection. You know, Germans that were proving this. And um, breeding them and bring, bringing forth babies that they determined would be the enforcers, super soldiers, master race. Uh, they said the God men. Uh, okay, because now let's just <laughs> kind of and stop I there because you're laying an awful lot on us. And, and again, Russ has been in this for so long and his calling is so deep that you really have to get sort of get on board with what he's saying. You're basically saying that not only are people being recruited yeah. to dark purposes, but raised from the cradle right on up. Right. By, and you, you use the word coven. Yeah. And when I hear the word coven, I think of witchcraft, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, it may right. be more than that. It is more. I mean, we, on, on, again, on the, on the popular, we hear, we've heard in America, uh, Europe has heard this, satanic ritual abuse, multiple personality disorder, uh, and, and some in the public just think that's a crazy thing. Well, not only crazy, but they might pay for a movie ticket to go see it. For example, I remember an old movie, it's got to be 50 years old, called The Three Faces of Eve, about a woman who had three different personalities, right. and that movie became very popular, uh, popularized the whole idea of right. multiple personality. But it left you with the impression that she was just like one woman, and she had a very rare condition. Right. You're saying this is more than one person, and it's not rare anymore. It's not rare anymore because what happened when we go over the history now, in the 70s they began to show up in psych wards all across the United States. Um, they didn't know what to do with them. They thought they were schizophrenic at first, but they noticed there's a difference. So the American Psychological Association changed their diagnostic manual, defining this as multiple personality disorder in the DSM-3. Then the DSM-4, they defined it even further as something different than schizophrenia, Someone who has distinct, separate sub alters, sub parts, sub personalities. Um, and so their, their diagnostics um, grew, but it's not definitive enough. They haven't got to the roots of it. Where did this come from? Why, why thousands in the 80s, and by 1994, Holly Hector at Centennial Hospital on the uh, uh, award that they were working with these folks, they said the approximate was 2.4 million. That blew me away when I was back in the 90s, because yeah. we were dealing with them left and right. But um, question, where'd they come from? Who did this? They all know it's trauma-based. But then the dark side of this began to appear everywhere. Well, now we're talking about something that uh, some of you may say, well, I don't know whether this has uh, anything to do with me or not. But you really need to know what's going on. And I want to go back to the world of our Lord and the New Testament. Uh, very often, he would meet people who were said to be possessed by devils, and Jesus would then drive the devils out of them. Uh, the demoniac of Gadara is one example, I, and I know you're familiar with all of these, but what I'm trying to say is that the Bible regards this kind of thing as more or less standard. But in the 20th and 21st centuries, we have come back to, to saying, oh, no, that's just biblical terminology. It's mythology. Jesus didn't really drive devils out. That was just the local way of describing that phenomenon. But in fact, he did drive de demons out. And, and there's a lot to be said for the fact that there's so much of this in the New Testament. Right. Yeah, it's, it's um, I mean, we even have the scripture in 1 John 3, uh, 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. 
Uh, at the cross, he brings a public uh, exposure and a crushing. So this is all about the dark side as God in Christ comes back to bring redemption, which involves freedom from what's really there. It, it remind, our, our stuff reminds us like of Ezekiel chapter 8. Nobody knew in the city of God that there was a coven underground, hidden. Uh, God has to take Ezekiel and supernaturally take him in. It's really there, but nobody knew. But God took him step by step and exposed, showed him what God says in Ezekiel yes. 8, detestable things. And to, by the way, when he, shows, when he shows Ezekiel this, he says, Ezekiel, I'm going to show you these things in order that you'll know why I allowed the people to be taken into captivity. It's because basically they drifted over into that dark world and, and that then removed God's uh, uh, holy covering from those people. The Babylonians could come in and take them away. Right. And, that's, and, that's, and again, there is a scary side to this in this sense. Um, because we got drawn into law enforcement with it. We've done uh, surveillance. We've done uh, tracking. We've gone after the criminal side. Um, we, we're talking now the blood and guts of the underground. Satanic ritual abuse has gone into multi-continental. It's in Germany and Russia and Ireland and England and Australia and Canada. And everybody's got to deal with it. So Now, again, I, I've got a million questions. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, yes. but, but I have to ask. Does law enforcement actually um, receive the, the things that you're teaching? Do they understand that this, is, in fact, is a phenomenon that impinges on their daily lives? Well, they sought me out as we were teaching and dealing, doing conferences on it back in the, this is the 90s. And uh, they brought me in only so that I could teach in the police academy. They wanted me to teach there. So um, law enforcement in the late 80s and the 90s across the United States began to develop occult crime, satanic crime, detectives, and units, and began to teach in their academies across the board. One book called Crime Warps predicted the 1990s to be that, that the crime of the 90s would be satanic ritual crime cases. And it, and it, it panned out to be true. In a way, and I speak as a pastor of more than 30 years standing, and so I, have, I had some experience in uh, sharing the gospel in, in dealing with Christians. And my impression of Christianity today is that it's, it's been, I, I guess, rather coddled. We're kind of a soft and, and sweet and loving group of people who really have not seen the dark side so much. And maybe we're not as prepared as we should be to deal with it. Has that been your experience? It is. And I, I, I with you, a brother pastor, 30 years, pastoring, loving the people, but wanting to see the church, the body of Christ, be all that it should be. Evangelism, prayer, deliverance factors. Where, you know, Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. That's a positive uh, statement about the strength and power of the church. But the fact is, that forefront, that real stuff is going to be there. And when you deal with demonized individuals and real Satanists, and now see how broad it's become, we have to scream. We have to be able to tell the public, say to the church, a lot of what's going on on the surface is because of what's going on behind the scenes. Russ, I want to read a couple of verses of Scripture and have you react to them. Sure. And, and I think most of us are familiar with Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And now we come to verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I want you to react to that because we've read those verses over and over again, but maybe we don't quite understand the depth of what's going on here. Sure. In verse 10, that we're to be empowered with the mighty strength of God. This is, um, well, how does that occur? How does that strength and empowerment will put on, as a command in the Greek, uh, imperative, put on the full armor of God? And the reason, our struggle, our battle, our warfare, it's not against flesh and blood. And then the Spirit of God lists we read it in the English, principalities, powers, wicked forces. But the original Greek is cosmocrater, archon, exousia, porneus, pneumonikai. Different, I'll use the word species, because Jesus said in one case in the Gospels, this type 
the word type, this kind comes only out with prayer and fasting. Well, the word, anybody can look it up, has that idea of species. Among the dark ones, the fallen ones, the demonic realm, there's different kinds. That's who we're battling against. In a We've way, been given provisions, though. In a way, it sound, almost sounds like we're dealing with a bureaucracy. It's, <laughs> you've got your upper level, mm -hmm. you've got the, the, the little bit lower level, the managerial, right. and then you've got the, the, the low, lower caste demons right. down here. And this whole this thing is like a satanic army. Sure. Just on the other side of the veil. You can't quite see it. Right. But it's working. And I think we're I think even in our in, in the United States, let alone the rest of the world, there's no question in the last twenty years, thirty years, we've seen we've all know the rise of this. We're hearing more cases. Churches are knowing that things are happening. Here's what I believe, Gary. We've been given We've been given the authority of Christ. We've been called to put on the armor of God. We've been given the Word of God. We have the Spirit of God. We have everything in Christ superior to all this, along with biblical prophecy, which is God's intel telling what the enemy's going to do. We should be at the cutting edge. We should be very powerful. But lack of our appropriation, our knowledge you know, of, of all of Scripture and our experience, let alone the dark side operating secretly. Um, this is why we're in, a, I think, a, a critical stage. Uh, revival is needed of all truth. And uh, we, we've got to understand because that, bo that book predicts darker things to come. Now, in your book, uh, and by the way, uh, this, is, this book is extensive. Don't expect to go through it in a couple of evenings. There's a lot here. Uh, you use the term satanic ritual abuse you call it SRA for short but uh, in a few words how would you describe that what what exactly is that and how does it apply to us sure a uh, quick the quicker v version of this is just again children is all the, every single SRA MPD or DID goes back to childhood the trauma they're 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 caused physical emotional and spiritual sexual trauma the goal for the Satanist, this real underground, the real kind, is to cause trauma, to cause dissociation, to split personality, and then to begin to demonize and program and raise an altered person. So it's the systematic abuse of a younger person in order to make that person a follower. Absolutely. Now, is that really true? I mean, does that really happen? I can hear people asking that question. Sure. Wow, I, I've never run into anything like this. Uh, and, but you're yet right. you're saying, Russ, that this is a serious phenomenon. Yeah. Well, and, and again, Laven's born in Germany was to be a secret project. Anything dark is always the secret power of lawlessness, the secret. And so when we think of that, Satan operates in a secrecy, and he operates uh, cloaked, and, uh, but yet he's operating. And this is our big issue. Um, the fact is we're dealing with it. Uh, churches are dealing with it all across the board. Uh, every psych ward in the United States have, have, have these victims. Uh, counseling centers. Um, law officers I talk to, psych ward workers I talk to, uh, psychologists I talk to, all across America. Now, if the statistics are right, and this is something we've got to come to grapple with, and I'm, I'm willing to grapple with it, um, is, there, is there up to 10 million, as one Canadian psychiatrist tells us, up to 10 million cases in the last 35 years, and growing? Now, now that we've sort of established a baseline and, and we're all on the same page here, uh, what do we need to do as Christians? And I know you have this book divided into to four, uh, four basic parts. And you're basically preparing people for spiritual warfare. We've all heard the term spiritual warfare, and we're like soldiers who have, uh, have been recruited, but wait a minute, we haven't been trained. <laughs> <laughs> right? I hear that all over. And right. I'm sure you run into this all the time, right? Yeah, and as a pastor, see, we're supposed to disciple. For example, all the conferences in the last four years, all over the place, all over the nation we've been to, and thousands of people that have listened to uh, the online stuff that we do too. So here's what we're, we're saying. We call it the five A's, that we need to be uh, the word awareness. Paul says in the scriptures, we're not unaware of the devil's schemes. That's a good thing. Don't, you know, he's saying we're not unaware. Look up the Greek word meaning willfully ignorant of the subject. 
So we're, we don't need to hide. We need to be really aware. Number two, the Greek word gregoruo, alert or be watch. That is the word that looks, it means look for the impending danger. Colossians 4.2, prayer, watch, thanksgiving needs to be incorporated. The third A is authority. Jesus says in Luke 10, I have given you authority to trample on this dark side, to overcome all the power of the enemy. And he says, and nothing will harm you. I think because of the dark side fear factor, Jesus gives us a word that should boost our confidence. And the truth is, when we appropriate and get involved, God's power, His strength, the beauty of salvation and deliverance, it's, it's astounding to see what God does. I'll never forget the first time I really understood what Paul was writing about in uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 and following. And I'm just going to read this first verse for us. It said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And I looked up that word uh, in the Greek. For perilous, it's, it's the Greek word chalapas. And it's only used one other place in the New Testament. And that is to describe the man who came out of the rocks to confront Jesus. And he, was, he had the strength of ten men. He was violent. And the, the, the Greek of the New Testament uses this word, the same word, chalapos, to describe that demonized man. And, 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 and so it seems to me that what Paul is saying here, this know also that in the last days ragingly insane times shall come. And that's what you're talking about, right? Sure. I think that mentions it in Daniel. We were talking about what's coming with the fourth kingdom. We see Jesus himself speak about this in Matthew 24. And it is heavy, but we've got the answer the world is going crazy about. The world's confused. The world's fearful. The world is collectively fearful of catastrophic stuff coming. The scripture defines what's coming, but gives an answer of our hope, our salvation, the coming of the Prince of Peace. There's going to be an end to all of this, but the answer is not in you know, man and definitely not in the deception of the dark side. Uh, what they're plotting has brought great destruction. We've dealt with hundreds of cases, thousands of hours of helping to bring salvation, healing, deliverance, and help to the victims. There is help, but outside of Christ, demonized, split up, altered like this, we're not seeing people get better. Now, we may at this time be talking to someone who has had an unfortunate uh, situation befall them, perhaps in their family, maybe in their relatives or, or acquaintances, daily acquaintances, and they have seen that individual, maybe, uh, maybe a, a close relative, maybe a cousin, exhibit some strange behavior, and, and they have talked among themselves saying, you know, this, this person has really gone to the dark side, and we don't have any idea what to do. And they may be saying, you know, maybe we need to get Russ's book and find out what's going on here. If they get your book, uh, A, will that give them something to work with, and B, will that enable them to talk to other people or, to, or get expert help? Sure, because I think this, the book, it's got a strange title. And, and we tell you why in the beginning of the book. The title comes from one of the, from Fort Bragg, a Psy warrior, one of these powerful chosen ones, Dark Side. They knew dark rituals, dark powers. They told me one day, Russ, you believe in revivals like Jonathan Edwards and the revivals that struck. We believe, Dark Side Satanists believe, we're going to bring about a counterfeit Pentecost. We're going to bring about so much dark power mm. in the world. And we're going to bring a chaos. It's going to collapse everything. Then, then we're, our new world order is coming. Now, this is what they've told and, us. And they really believe that. And they really plot for it. Y wow. You would not believe the fierce, um, I, I, can, I call it a fury inside them, wanting to bring this about. And they believe, that the, whether we believe it or not, they believe. And we're talking 25 years of working with them from all over, hundreds and hundreds. They believe they're being created to be the troops of Antichrist. They say the Black Awakenings, the collapse that will cause a tearing down to bring a new order that they will help usher in. You know, we watch the world today, and something has changed, certainly. It's not the same world that we grew up in. And there seems to be some kind of a quickening change of events. And that's what you're talking about. These, right. these entities, uh, demonic entities, whatever you want to call them, feel that, that now history is on their side. 
Exactly. The darks, and, and God has given us the insight saying, Revelation 12, the dragon, who seeks to lead the whole world astray. The fourth kingdom of Daniel. It's all about globalism. There is no political, economic, military globalism without the spiritual powers behind it. Satan and his crew, on a global scale, from the skies down, um, are operating on an agenda. And they have an agenda that Scripture shows they're going to make a lot of a headway because of the, the, the lost mankind, God rejecting political structures, um, and that's where they're going to get room. Russ, uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. I say it's a pleasure. I hate to have to talk to, about things like this, but as yeah. Christians, we need to know this. Sure. And we're even commanded, Ephesians 5, expose if, if we don't know, if we hide from, um, it's like Goliath on the field. We know Goliath in the sense, spiritually, the dark side is on the field. Do we hide in the rocks, or do we, like David, in the name of the Lord, go down to do what we need to do? And we found this, in 30 years of doing this, God is with us, He's never abandoned us, protects us, His hand is here, people get saved, people get delivered, and more of this gets exposed. Yes, the dark side's a radical, bloody, ugly place. But there is a king from heaven that has come to save and defeat this. We have victory in Jesus, but we need to be out on the field. We don't have to be afraid of the dark. Not at all. Not in Christ. Not in Christ. You know, the freedom that we have in Christ, the liberty, the new life in Christ Jesus is beyond anything that you can possibly imagine. If you don't know him, pray to receive him. Russ, pleasure to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you, Gary, so much. And to the rest of you, remember, keep looking up.